This video clip has been prepared for the AEDT 1120U Foundations of Digital Teaching and Learning Technologies course. The title of this video clip is Constructing Knowledge Within a Community of Learners. The analysis questions for this video clip are as follows. Number one, according to Jonas and et al, how can educators best support the learning of their students and how do Jonas and et al define learning? Number two, how do the processes of assimilation and accommodation allow people to learn? And how does this change the definition of learning? Number three, what role does discussion play in Vygotskyan social constructivist theory? And number four, how does von Glasersfeld's radical constructivist ideas change the definition of learning? Constructivism, broadly speaking, is a learning theory that deals with the way people make sense of their world through the use of a series of constructs which filter or order the way they perceive the reality that surrounds them. Constructivists believe that each person builds an individual perspective of reality based on his or her experiences and frames of reference, and that learning will occur if students are given opportunities to construct personal meanings out of their experiences, particularly when discussed with their peers. And there are references in there to Piaget, 1972, von Glasersfeld, 1995, and Vygotsky, 1978. The new conceptions that arise or understanding should be intelligible, plausible, and fruitful, according to Posner, Strike, Hewson, and Gertzog, 1982. Constructivism as a learning theory is not a teaching theory. This essentially means that the theory cannot be used directly to produce processes that will ensure that ideas will be learned by the students. Instead, of the theory, instead, the theory provides explanations of student learning that can be used to construct environments within which learners will have opportunities to learn, rather than using indirect teaching methods of telling the learners what they are expected to know. All of this has the impact of changing the teaching process from one of conveying information to one of the creation of environments within which learning can occur. Meaning making is the activity that can occur in these created learning environments. Note that meaning making can occur in many other places as well, as learning is not confined only to the created learning environments. This quote, uh, the quote that's found on the slide is taken from Jonathan Davidson Collins Campbell Banahag, 1995, Constructivism in communica Computer Mediated Communication in Distant Education. According to Piaget, from the time each of us is born, we constantly interact with the world around us. We encounter situations within which we identify problems that need to be solved. These problems can be of the physical variety, such as learning to walk, or the cognitive type, such as calculating tax that will be added to our purchases. Many problems require both cognition and physical action, such as learning to speak, which requires that we learn to associate sound symbols with the concepts that they rec uh, represent, and then we need to be able to distort our vocal cords, mouth, and tongue in ways that allow us to create the sounds. It's no wonder that young children can walk much earlier than they can talk, in meaningful ways, that is. One of the interesting things about all of this is that no one can observe the cognitive side of this equation. Consequently, the only way that someone can observe that something has been learned is to see an associated action resulting from the thought process. Even then, the external observer cannot easily determine whether the thinking has been memorized verbatim, which is a relatively easy form of learning, according to Benjamin Bloom's taxonomy, or if the thinking comes as a result of higher order thinking, such as analysis, synthesis, evaluation, and creation. All of this has huge implications when we as educators consider the assessment of learning. Piaget suggested that humans learn by taking action to solve problems or actively changing the mental concepts which have been constructed as solutions to the problems that we have encountered. The mental concepts, therefore, can be referred to as constructs. Multiple related constructs are referred to as mental schema. These are, there are two processes that are used to modify these constructs. Assimilation is a term that Piaget coined to describe the process of taking information from events, contexts, and situations and adding or fitting them into existing schema. And accommodation 
is a related process that occurs when a mental existing mental schema are found to be inconsistent with external events, con contexts, and situations. That is, the existing schema do not allow for adequate understanding of what is occurring. In order to do this, the mental schema must be modified or reorganized, or new mental schema must be created. According to Piaget, humans are driven to maintain a balance between the schema that are represented in our minds and our environment from which they are derived. When we are exposed to, new, to a new event that has not been previously experienced, we experience disequilibria or dissonance, which is similar to what happens when two notes on the piano keyboard that are um, right next to each other are played simultaneously. By employing the processes or of assimilation and accommodation, we can bring our internal world back into equilibrium with the external environment by resolving the dissonance and bringing the internal and external into harmony. At roughly the same time Piaget was formulating his ideas regarding cognitive development, Lev Vygotsky began to put together the concepts that form what is known as his social development theory. Vygotsky, contrary to Piaget, contended that social or cultural interaction was foundational for cognitive development. Vygotsky, like Piaget, argued that learning occurs while the individuals interact with the environment around them. However, Vygotsky suggested that an individual's cognitive development was shaped by the beliefs, values, and attitudes of the culture in which the individual matures. It becomes evident that language and social interactions with others plays an influential role in the development of thinking or intellectual adaptation. Another way of expressing this is that new understanding or learning arises in the space between individuals as they communicate with each other. Two principles pr predominate Vygotskyan learning theory. These are the principles of the more knowledgeable other, or MKO, and the zone of proximal development, ZPD. A more knowledgeable other is a guide who can facilitate the learning of another. The only prerequisite for an MKO is that this is someone or something who has a better understanding of the concept than the learner does themselves. The MKO can assist the learner to solve a problem that was impossible to learn independently. This is the primary characteristic of the ZPD, which can be defined as the difference or space or zone between what a learner can achieve independently and what a learner can achieve with the guidance and facilitation of an MKO. The concepts of MKO and ZPD take on particular importance for educators as they provide some guidance regarding what can be done to facilitate learning. The conception of a learner as a creator or constructor of their own understanding is still central to Vygotskyan learning theory. Indeed, the idea of learning within a context of a learning community becomes a requirement. Ernst von Glossesfeld formulated a theory of radical constructivism, which he claims is, quote, a theory of knowledge in which knowledge does not reflect an objective ontological reality, but exclusively an ordering and organization of a world constituted by our experience, end quote, von Glossesfeld, 1984. Since according to this theory, knowledge is determined by the knower, it cannot be objectified or transferred from one person to another. Rather, as suggested by both Piaget and Vygotsky, knowledge must be actively constructed independently by each person as a way of understanding the world around them. Since knowledge is subjectively constructed by each learner, it becomes the responsibility of a teacher or educator to require the learner to interpret what they are experiencing and to communicate the learner's understanding to others for critical examination. Please refer back to the earlier video clip in the series for further information regarding taking a critical stance in a community of learners. The theory page in this particular video clip is uh, given as a reference to the Jonason article that was uh, referenced earlier. That's Jonason, Davidson, Collins, Campbell, and Bannon Hag, 1995, Constructivism and Computer Mediated Communication in Distance Education. The link will be provided for you in the presentation video or the uh, PDF that will be available um, through the Blackboard portion of this course. 
That brings us to the synthesis questions for this video clip, and these are as follows. Number one, constructivist theories can be thought of as being relativistic in nature. What does this mean, and how does this relate to learning and educating? Number two, what kinds of tools and processes can an educator use to assess learning if learner knowing is never truly revealed? Number three, describe the role of MKO in Vygotsky's social constructivist theory and who, what might be, or might take on the role of the MKO, and how should the MKO behave, and what should the MKO do or not do. And number four, how can technology be used to support learning processes in constructivist-oriented situations? That brings us to the end of the synthesis questions and the end of this video clip.